Barakatai Yahawa, Barakatai Yahawashai, Bahasham, Barakahakwadash, Barakatum. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahawa, Bahasham, Yahawashai. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule and teach well. In peace and salutations to you, sincere Aki, I'm out there, pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you, brothers, endure until the end. This is the Brother Raya with another video, and I'm going to start it off in Psalms chapter 68, verse 17. The chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them as in Sinai in the holy place, and the chariots of the Most High, or the Heavenly Father, whose true name is Yahweh, or what people ignorantly refer to as uh, so-called UFOs, <laughs> flying saucers, UAPs as they're calling them now, and they're piloted by the angels of the Most High. As it says, the chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels, hey, an innumerable multitude of chariots, you know, the heavenly army of Yahweh. And the chariots piloted by the angels, hey, have, uh, they're in these last days, hey, they're making their appearance more and more known all across the planet because they're about to do two things. On the one hand, they're going to be the vehicles of salvation for the elect of the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel consisting of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as well as the Israelite foreigners who look like these heathen nations. The chariots are going to come being led by the Son of the Most High, whose true name is Yahabashai, whom the world ignorantly refers to as so-called Jesus, to a uh, Save the elect, as it says in Star Trek, beam me up, Scotty. And the chariots of the Most High are also uh, coming to make war against the heathens, the heathen nations, chiefly the biblical Edomites, or these so called white people who are currently in control of the planet right now. This is Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots. His chariots are even thousands, 20,000s, you know, piloted by the angels like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Again, the armies of heaven being led by Yahabashai on the one hand coming to save the elect of the nation of Israel and then on the other hand to make war against the heathens and that, uh, you know, those rebukes with flames of fire is talking about that concentrated heat or so-called laser beams that are going to be getting fired from the chariots. This is Zechariah chapter 5. I'm going to read verses 1 to 4. Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof is twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof ten cubits, also talking about a chariot. And you know, the chariots are described as many things in the scriptures. Flying rolls, horses and, and, and horsemen and charioteers, uh, a wheel within a wheel, as it says in Ezekiel chapter 1, clouds, etc., etc. And the chariots aren't bound by man's understanding of physics. They can do whatever they want. They can... Uh, change into any shape or size that they want verse 3 then said he unto me this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth again the chariots are the vehicles of salvation for the elect of the nation of israel and the vehicles of destruction or the curse you know for these heathens chiefly these edomites hey as well as the wicked of our people that these chariots are going to be zapping as well for everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it, and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. And who's the ultimate thief out here? Esau Edom, the so-called white man, who used his blessing, the sword, as it says in Genesis chapter 27, to gain the fatness of the earth and the dew of heaven. Colonization, rape, robbing, and murdering, you know, these different nations to steal their resources and... uh plant himself in those lands hey just look at what happened with the northern kingdom the so-called uh 
Native Americans and Latinos in the Americas. But as it says, for everyone that swear it shall be cut off as on this side and everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. You know, swearing to these false, you know, gods, these idols out here. Verse four, I will bring it forth, saith Yahweh of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, Esau, Edom, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. Hey, what, what did these uh, Edomites do? They took the Bible with the Roman Catholic Church and just turned it into something completely contrary to what the scriptures actually say. They changed the Lord's name, his son's name. They changed their images and the images of the angels from what? So-called dark-skinned Negroes with uh, white woolly beards and afros to what? So-called white people with brown and blonde hair and blue eyes. And they even covered up the images of the Israelites and made them look like Edomites. And then also what? You've got uh, Israelites out here who know that they're Israelites and set themselves up as prophets out here prophesying. Hey, some even using the true name of the Heavenly Father and his son. But what? They don't teach what the scriptures say. They mingle the scriptures with uh, the ways of this world out here. Hey, these chariots are coming to wreck, wreak havoc on the wicked. And it shall remain in the midst of his house, and it shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. As I said back in Isaiah 66, verse 15, his chariots come in like a whirlwind to render his rebuke with a flame of fire, that concentrated heat, those so-called laser beams. But I opened up the video with these verses to preface an article on dailymail.co.uk titled, Tucker Carlson says UFOs are piloted by spiritual entities with bases under the ocean and the ground. And hey, Tucker Carlson is definitely on to something because as we've been going into with these, uh, you know, scriptures, the, the chariots aren't UFOs piloted by little green men with big heads and uh, big eyes. Again, back in Isaiah 68, verse 17. The chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels. Hey, they are piloted by spiritual entities. UFOs and their pilots might not be extraterrestrials from a distant planet at all, but spiritual entities who have inhabited Earth for as long as humanity itself. At least that's the supernatural theory Fox News vet and one-time MSNBC host Tucker Carlson put forward this week on comedian Joe Rogan's podcast. And you know how the devil does these things. They'll uh, bring out the truth on a, you know, on a platform that isn't taken seriously because what what's the Joe Rogan podcast known for? You know, celebrities. And you know, they'll they'll bring on some, you know, knowledgeable people on there as well, but it's known for making jokes, you know, getting high, talking about drugs. So this would be the perfect platform to reveal some truth on. Oh, this is just a, you know, some wacky seaspiracy theorist by a bunch of potheads. There's a ton of evidence that they're under the ocean and under the ground. Carlson told Rogan's listeners during the show's usual sprawling three hour long chat format, adding they've been here for a very long time. And, you know, the chariots don't need bases underground or under the ocean. They come from the fourth dimension, you know, the third heaven, the spiritual realm, which people refer to as heaven. They transition in and out of our reality and do whatever they want. And, you know, if the chariots want to go underground or under the ocean, they can do just that. <laughs> but they don't need no bases. And, you know, I remember, you know, our our. Elder down here, the elder brother Yakana always talks about how he saw a clip and how our uh, apostles talked about a clip that came out probably, you know, 10 plus years ago showing that a chariot, you know, I think it was a, a Navy ship recording there in the middle of the ocean. But the chariot, you know, just 
in, in the blink of an eye, without doing any maneuvering, just shot up out of the ocean and I think just zipped away, you know, uh, a vehicle that did something beyond anything man could create. Carlson's latest comments echo an increasingly common refrain from UFO curious lawmakers, including Missouri Congressman Eric Burleson and his fellow GOP legislator Tim Burchett, who both compared UFOs to biblical entities in the past year. The first chapter of Ezekiel is pretty clear of a UFO sighting, Representative Burchett told reporters in January of 2023, ahead of his push to bring UFO whistleblowers to testify before Congress last summer. And hey, he's on the money, that wheel within a wheel, you know, what people refer to as so-called flying saucers in the first chapter of uh, Ezekiel is talking about the chariots. And, you know, it even describes the angels that pilot them. Whenever I use the term angels, added Representative Burleson, who has been privy to classified briefings on the UFO phenomena, to me, it's synonymous with an extra dimensional being. But, 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 let me see. All right. Yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, skimming through it, hit the main points. All right. Tucker Carlson appeared to earnestly co-sign these notions on his April 19th podcast appearance while pleading ignorance on many unanswered questions surrounding the issue. Now more commonly called unidentified anomalous phenomena or UAPs. Uh, another term for it. I remember when UAP just about a year ago, you know, was a unidentified aerial phenomena. They're from here. Hey, they're from the spirit world and they've been here for thousands of years, which they have been here for thousands of years all throughout the history of, uh, you know, mankind, which chariot sightings are documented all throughout the scriptures. Carlson said, whatever they are, and it's pl pretty clear to me that they're spiritual entities. He continued, whatever that means. What's very interesting is that, uh, you know, back in the early 2000s, and I'm sure you're still able to find this footage online. You know, Tucker Carlson came, uh, you know, past the camp of our apostles and elders up in New York and had a dialogue with them. So he's aware of the Hebrew Israelites. The veteran broadcaster explained that by supernatural, he meant that beings were above the observable nature and that they don't behave according to the laws of science. Hey, these chariots, like I said earlier, are able to do things beyond the comprehension of a man's physics or what man is able to do with his so-called technology, which even his technology and the ideas of it came from the Heavenly Father. With that fact set, Carlson put it rhetorically, what do you conclude? Earlier in 2024, Rogan commented on Carlson's growing public interest in UFOs, wondering ahead of Carlson's appearance on his program, what does he know? But speculation linking UFOs to religious visitations and or theories about interdimensional beings have been a reoccurring feature within the discourse on the topic since the early 20th century. You know, here's a, a Renaissance painting where they have, you know, in that top corner, what looks like a so-called UFO, which, you know, again, you know, there have been chariot sightings all throughout the history of man. Ba -ba -ba. The concept gained its highest and arguably most reputable profile with the publication of the book Passport to Magonia from Folklore to Flying Saucers by the astronomer and internet pioneer Jacques Vallée in 1969. Valet, who later served as the inspiration for Francois Truffaut's character in Steven Spielberg's UFO blockbuster, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, had spent years poring over volumes of ancient texts for the groundbreaking tome. He paired 
1180 encounters with luminous flying earthenware vessels reported over Japan, Roman accounts of hovering shields, and Native American stories of baskets from heaven to argue a continuity with modern flying saucer cases. Hey, and I believe, you know, there's, a, there's an account out there of even Alexander, you know, Alexander the Greek, what these people call Alexander the Great, hey, that there were chariot sightings, you know, during his time as well. And real quick, this is a uh, second Maccabees in the Apocrypha chapter five. I'm going to start at verse one. And this is an account of, you know, Antiochus the fourth, Antiochus Epiphanes and his men, you know, <laughs> seeing the chariots and the angels. About the same time, Antiochus prepared his second voyage into Egypt. And then it happened that through all the city for the space almost of 40 days, they were seen horsemen running in the air in cloth of gold and armed with lances like a band of soldiers and troops of horsemen in array encountering and running one against another with shaking of shields and multitude of pikes and drawing of swords and casting of darts and glittering of golden ornaments and harnesses of all sorts wherefore every man prayed that the apparition might turn to good Antiochus and his men wit wit witnessed you know the angels piloting the chariots and like I've been saying throughout the video you know the chariots are coming to do one of two things you know the v on the one hand to be the vehicle of salvation for the elect of the nation of Israel and on the other hand to be the vehicle of destruction for these heathens and they've done the same thing you know throughout the history of Israel they've uh helped out you know the israelites when fighting against the heathens and here's another account right here this is second kings chapter 6 i'm gonna read verses 12 to 18 and this is dealing when the syrians came against the northern kingdom and one of his servants said none my lord o king but elisha the prophet that is in israel tell us the king of israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber and he said Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of the Most High was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master! How shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Yahweh, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And Yahweh opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto Yahweh and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness, and he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. Hey, the chariots are all around us and have always been around us, manipulating, you know, mankind on the orders of the Most High, protecting Israel and, you know, fighting against the heathens. And that's exactly what's about to take place again. Yahweh is going to lead the armies of heaven to again save the elect of the nation of Israel on one hand and to make war against the heathen nations, chiefly the Edomites. Read Isaiah chapter 63. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from, uh, from Basra? And Basra was a chief capital city of the Edomites. And the modern day Basra would be the United States of America, where the greatest number you know, of the elect are going to be saved when Yahweh Shai makes the second coming. But now I'm going to close it out in uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. And the header reads, the revelation of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Hey, the revealing, the revelation of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, which the Most High gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And hey, these are the times we're living in, the last days, the last seconds of the last days, 
when Yahweh Shai is about to make his second coming, hence why there's an ever-increasing number of chariot sightings all across the planet, so many that these different governments have had to scramble and, and admit to, the, to their knowledge of their existence, and why they're coming up with these different task forces and what? Space forces. Because uh, these heathens, <laughs> Esau, is going to try to fight against Yahweh Shai's second coming. That's that war in heaven in Revelation chapter 12, verse uh, 7 to like 9. But what is it saying there? Hey, the, the dragon and his angels, Esau, Edom, and his military might were cast down from heaven unto the ground. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 7. Behold, he, speaking of Yahweh cometh with clouds, those chariots. Read Psalms 104, verse 3, where it, where it compares the Most High's chariots to clouds. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, which, as we always go into, proves reincarnation. You know, those Roman centurions that pierced Yahweh Shai on the cross, you know, thousands of years ago. They're back here today to receive judgment from Yahweh Shai. And all kindreds or nations of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Ammon. And why are they going to wail because of him? Back in Isaiah 66 verse 15. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire through his son Yahawashai, and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire, making war against the heathen nations, while also saving the elect of his nation, the nation of Israel. So that's it with this video. And with this video, I hope you sincere Akim and Akwath were edified. Just keep strong. We are almost out of this final wicked captivity of the heathen nations, chiefly of the Edomites. And as always, I'm going to say, Abad Babol, Kwam Yasharala, and until next time, Shalom.